Welcome to Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. For over half a century, the Evangelistic Outreach team has traveled across the street, about the nation, and around the world with the gospel message. We're dedicated to the vision of our late founder, Dr. Calvin Evans, to reach the unreached for Jesus Christ. May the love of Christ touch you, and may His Word teach you, today on Evangelistic Outreach. This is an exciting week for us, for Calvin Ray and myself. We are uh, part of the Christian Baptist camp meeting going on all week long in Wheelersburg, Ohio. A tremendous camp meeting. We'll tell you more about that here in just a little bit. And as also, we will go back to the message that we started on last week's broadcast from Calvin Ray Evans from the Spring Jubilee. It's also part of this month's free gift offer. We'll give you more details about that as well. But join us in prayer today. We come before you today, Lord, and we thank you for all that you do for us. You have given us this space of time that we can share the gospel message with those that 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 need to hear it, those that are uh, need encouragement. Most of all, we pray that if someone today uh, hasn't accepted you into their life as their personal Savior, I pray that they come to that knowledge. I pray that they make that choice to follow you today. We're so thankful, Lord, that uh, of all the prayers you prayed for us, there are some prayers that you didn't pray, and Lord, because of that. Uh, we, we can have, uh, we, we have some tremendous blessings. And so today I pray that the message, I pray the music will touch somebody's heart today. And Lord, again, thank you for being so good to us. We never want to fail to praise you and thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Well, once my clothes were ragged The world looked down on me and I had no hope for tomorrow, nor for eternity. And then grace came with mercy and heard this orphan's plea. And now I've been adopted from bondage, I've been set free. And I'm no longer an orphan, for someone has rescued me, and my garments no longer are tattered, my family is royalty. So empty handed, no place to call my home, and no one who really loved me. But now look what I own. I'm feasting from the man up that falls from God on high. That's his name. There is a last supply. Well, now I'm no longer an orphan. Someone has rescued me. My garments no longer are tattered. My family is royalty. Sing it with us. Well, I came so empty handed. No place to call my own and no one to really love me church oh but now look what i own well i'm feasting on the manna that flows from god on high well and there is no there's plenty bless god that supply so while I'm no longer an orphan someone has rescued me my garments no longer are tattered my family is 
roll oh, one more time well now I'm no longer an orphan for Jesus has rescued me that's his name and my garments no longer are tethered my family is royalty Well, I came so empty-handed, no place to call my home, and there was no one but Mama that really loved me. Oh, but now look what I owe. Well, I'm feasting from the manna that falls from God on high. And there is no shorty. There is a look. Anybody glad you got adopted? Amen. Now I'm no longer an orphan. Thank God someone has rescued me. My garments no longer are tattered. My family is royalty. Now I'm no longer. For Jesus has rescued me, and my garments no longer are tattered. My family is royalty. Sing it again, Mike. Well, I'm no longer an orphan. Someone has rescued me, and my garments no longer. I'm wearing a white robe of glory. Bless God. One day after a while, I'll change. From this whole world, and I'm going home to be with Jesus. I don't know about you, but we're way too quiet in this world. Somebody needs to give me some glory and praise tonight. Well, I came so, so empty and didn't have a thing, no place to call my home. And no one who really loved me. But now, look what I own. Well, I'm feasting on the manna that flows from God on high. Here's the best part. And there is no, no shortage. There is a vast supply. has rescued me that's his name and my garments no longer are tattered my family is royalty now I'm no longer an orphan for Jesus has rescued me and my garments no longer are tattered my family is royalty Well, at the beginning of the program, we mentioned the Christian Baptist Camp Meeting taking place this week in Wheelersburg, Ohio. It's at the Christian Baptist Campgrounds on Old Gallia Pike in Wheelersburg. Calvary and myself are be privileged to be a part of a number of preachers that will be there for the week. We will be there Monday through Friday evening. Calvin Ray preaching on Monday and Thursday night. I'll be preaching on Tuesday and Friday night at 7 p.m. Mike Bland and Evidence will be singing. They also have morning and afternoon services with other preachers as well. It's just a tremendous week. It's a week of wonderful, powerful services. And if you'd like to be a part of that, we'd love for you to come and join us in Wheelersburg, Ohio at the Christian Baptist Campgrounds for the camp meeting going on all week long, again, Monday through Friday night. It starts at 7 p.m. If you need more information or directions, we have all that information here at the ministry office. Make sure you contact us this week. And when you contact us, be sure to get this month's free gift offer from the Spring Jubilee. 
a, a tremendous message that we're sharing with you today from Calvin Ray Evans, as well as some, an, another message and other singing as well. And we wanted to just be a blessing to you and also uh, just to have you experience what we experienced or maybe relive what you experienced at the Spring Jubilee. God gave us a tremendous week and uh, we wanted to share some more of that footage with you on this month's free youth offer. So make sure you contact us this week, 800-767-8713. Visit our website at calvinevans.org or you can write us a letter and request it. And we'd love to hear from you. We read every letter that comes in to this ministry office and we'd love to hear from you today. Our mailing address, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662. We realize with the current state of this world and this nation uh, that you have options and you have chosen to pray for us. You have chosen to support this ministry and we thank you for that. For those of you that are faithful in your giving, thank you. For those of you that uh, are just follow the obedience of the Holy Spirit and send in a special offering to help us, we thank you for that. I, I promise you, God will reward you for what you're doing. And uh, it means so much to know that throughout this world, the ministries and mission, and mission projects that we have at this outreach, we're able to keep those going because you care enough to pray, you care enough to support us, and we thank you so much for that. We just want to remind you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. We love you. And we pray today that this message will encourage you, and we pray that God will richly bless you for joining us today. This was the amazing thing. They had attended church so long, they knew when to say amen. I can't get Christians to say amen when I preach. But here's a, a senior couple that they're amening me when I'm preaching. They would get happy. They clapped their hands when the singer sang. They were thrilled, they were ecstatic. And they stayed that way until the invitation. And at the invitation, he'd do the same thing. He'd fold his arms, get a blank stare in his eyes like he was looking into nowhere. And he shut everything out. His wife would drop her head and never say a word. The pastor said, he's not well, preacher. He has a sickness that he could die at any time. And our church has had an extreme burden, praying and fasting and doing all they can. And anytime you talk to him, you can talk to him about anything, but when you privately and personally talk to him about the Lord, he just shuts you down. He's polite, but he just shuts you down. He said, I don't know what's happened. I don't know why he's that way. But the people agreed. There was somebody that knew what to do. The Lord. There's never a nut so hard that God can't crack them. The whole meeting went on to the last night. I'm telling you, the last night, I felt like I was in a funeral. The church literally was grieving that this old man and his dear wife had not come to be saved. We were nearing the end of the invitation and it wasn't, I don't want you to get the wrong impression, it wasn't anything that I did, it was the burden. My heart was breaking for this church. By the way, you ought not hold revivals if you can't become a part of that church and bear the burden of that church. Feel the load that they're carrying. And I was under that load with them it was as though they felt like, Lord, if we failed you in some way, if we missed something, because this man is going to die lost without Jesus and his wife, she may become bitter and never be saved too. The invitation was given and you know what he did? I said, would you sing just one more verse? I said we'd had a great revival I believe it was their great grandchild that was standing beside of them and that young child was saved on the very first night of that revival. 
he locked up, stared forward, and all of a sudden, I could see what the people couldn't see. I saw that grandchild get a hold of his sleeve and just jerk, 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 jerk. Papa, 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 papa. And all of a sudden, it's like he snapped out of a trance. That's the way the devil would get him. Almost like he was in another zone. I found out later what the child said. He looked down and said, shh, they're giving the invitation. The child looked up, crying uncontrollably, and said, Papa, why don't you and Mamma want to go to heaven with me? Nobody had to force him then. That child did what years of preaching. I'm not, I'm not diminishing the preaching. That child did what years of preaching had, had just been turned off by him, a deaf and near, but suddenly God found a way to say, this is your time. Now is the time. This is the place you ought to come and be saved. Do you know when you can get saved? You don't get saved when you want to get saved. I hear that so much. Well, when I want to, I'll go get, the devil make sure you never want to. You don't get saved when you want to get saved, you get saved when you can. And that's why God's given you one more day and one more opportunity so that you can come to Christ and be saved. And he said, I didn't pray that prayer because my kingdom is spiritual. And tonight there is a battle going on in this place. And the battle is for the souls of men, women, boys and girls. But thank God he is the one that can melt the heart and open the eyes to understanding and make them aware that they need saved. His kingdom would be unscriptural. His word would be unreliable had he prayed that prayer. Do you know two times in that same passage in the 54th verse, he said, but how then shall the scriptures be fulfilled that it must be? He said, if I pray this prayer, I can't fulfill the scriptures. Then in verse 56, he said, but all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. How many of you believe Jesus was the word made flesh? Hands went up all over. If he is the word made flesh, he who is the word knows the word. He could tell them everything about himself from the prophets to the time that he met them there on the Emmaus road. He could tell them about what had happened. He knew the word because he was the word. Had he prayed that prayer, he knew the word. Isaiah 53 had prophesied it 700 years before and in Psalm 22, a thousand years before, it had been prophesied the death that he should die. Zechariah had prophesied it over and over his suffering, the way that he would die. Had he prayed that prayer of deliverance, he could not fulfill his own word. And you and I couldn't trust any of it. But can I tell you this? His word is reliable. It's infallible. It's inherent. It's holy. It's settled forever in heaven. And he said, don't you know, if I call to my heavenly father in prayer and he delivers me, you cannot be delivered. His deliverance would have made our salvation unattainable. Do you know that we could not attain salvation if Jesus had not died the death that he died and given his blood the way that he did? For without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. 
The blood was always the pattern. They'd offer or the blood time and time again, over and over again. They'd offer the blood and the blood would be offered up time after time, year after year. Good for a nation, good for a family, good for an individual. But they had to keep going back, taking another lamb and taking another heifer and taking another turtle dove. But when Jesus came and offered his blood and it was presented before the heavenly father, the angels sang and rejoiced even though they could not understand it and they wanted to peer into it and they couldn't grasp what had happened. They knew the whole plan had always been redemption for lost souls and by his blood we are saved I was preaching a meeting one time on the blood and after the service someone came to rebuke me I'm used to it say how do you keep going like that I want to tell you this being a, this being a preacher it's not for sissies And if you wear your emotions on your sleeve, you better get over it real quick. They persecuted him. They said things about him. People will criticize you. Everybody, especially if they've got the wrong way, they think they want to tell you their way is the right way. But that's not the case. So they scolded me and they said to hear you preach tonight, it just sounded like that Jesus came and died on a cross and because of his blood and because he rose from the grave, you can come and ask him to forgive you and he'll save you of your sins and forgive you. Said, that's not true. And I said, well, what's wrong with it? Said, that's not what we do in our church. So then they had my curiosity aroused. I said, well, what do you do in your church? So help me, this is what they said. They said, well, We have certain seasons. The Lord moves by his spirit on us and we've got this enormous, it looks like a wash tub. And we we bring that wash tub to the front of the church and said, the saints of God gather around and pray and praise and said when that water starts to move, the first one that jumps in that water is cleansed of their sin. And they said, what do you think about that? I said, well, I'm not a Greek scholar, but I've got a Greek word for that, baloney. Nobody's ever been saved by jumping in a wash tub full of water. Jesus gave his life and Jesus gave his blood. And when we see him in that day, we will stand in anthem and say, we've overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of the testimony of the saving power of Jesus Christ. I preached longer than I meant to, but can I give you one more? Had he prayed that prayer, our eternity would be unthinkable. Have you ever thought about what your life would be like if Jesus didn't suffer, bleed, and die? Have you ever thought where you would be had you not heard the gospel? Have you ever thought about what eternity would be like? See, I'm old fashioned enough. I still believe there's a heaven and I still believe there's a hell. And I think heaven are for the saved. Heaven is for the saved. Hell is for the unsaved. You say, do you believe people, that God sends people into hell? No, people send themselves to hell. It's not the will of the Father that any should perish, but that all should come under repentance. He doesn't want you to die lost. He doesn't want you to die unsaved. If I was you tonight and unsaved, and if I left here without Christ, Let me give you some advice. There's a few things I would do if I was you leaving a meeting like this without Christ, risking going into eternity without Christ. The first thing I'd do, I'd get as many bottles of water as I could get and I'd drink 
and drink and drink. I drank long. I drank that water until I was so full. I couldn't get another drop down me because there'll be no water where you're going. You know what I'd do? You see these little babies, these little grandkids running around. Some of them are your children and grandchildren. Some of these little ones, you know what I'd do? I'd walk up to them and I'd say, can I hold that baby a minute? And I'd bring that baby to my chest and hold it as tight as I could ever hold it. Because where you're going, there won't be no babies. If I was you tonight, right now, I would start praying the prayer that you can pray. God, give me just a little longer until this invitation is given to come and give my life to Christ. Did COVID not teach us one thing? Life is uncertain. Death is certain. Eternity is forever. Your soul will never die and will never cease to exist. There was a time when you were not. There will never be a time when you won't be again. A million years from tonight, you'll be somewhere. Well, thank you for joining us today on the program. Before we leave the air, I want to take just a minute to remind you, I hope you can join Brian and I at the Christian Baptist Camp Meeting this week. It'll be going on all the way through Friday night, and I'll be preaching on Monday night and Thursday night. Brian will be preaching on Tuesday night and Friday night at 7 o'clock each evening. They have several other preachers that's in preaching the meeting. They have three services a day, the morning, the afternoon, and the evening, but we in invite you to come and be part of this great camp meeting going on in Wheelersburg, Ohio at the Christian Baptist Campground. Thank you for joining us today. Until next week at this same time over this same station, may God bless you. Thank you for joining us today on Evangelistic Outreach Ministries. The fields are For more information about this ministry, contact us at Evangelistic Outreach Ministries, 299 Ohio Avenue, New Boston, Ohio, 45662, or toll free at 800-767-8713. You can also visit us online at calvinevans.org.